Welcome back. South Africa may appeal against FIFA's decision to order a replay of the World Cup qualifier against Senegal because of match manipulation by the referee. The South African Football Association is studying a decision upheld by the Court of Arbitration for Sports on Wednesday. A senior member of the South African Football Association has said that it cannot accept the decision by football world governing body FIFA. This was taken after the match referee, Joseph Lamptey, was banned for life by FIFA. The Ghanaian referee was accused of match manipulation. Neither South Africa nor Senegal are accused of any wrongdoing. A South African FA lawyer, Norman Orens, who chairs the legal committee of the South African Football Association, says his organization has never been advised by football world governing body how the match was fixed. The match is due to be replayed in the November 2017 international window. And for more on the controversy trailing South Africa versus Senegal World Cup qualifier, we're now joined by the SABC football correspondent, Rob Delport. Thanks for joining us, Rob. What's the feeling among football lovers the with a decision for the World Cup qualifier between South Africa and Senegal to be replayed? Well, I've got to tell you, a lot of people in South Africa are in a bit of shock at the moment. Yeah, it's obviously been a terrible football week um, after the double defeat to Cape Verde. And this has just been the icing on the cake. Um, you know, uh, it, it's, just, it, it's just taken a lot of footballers, uh, uh, football fans by surprise that, that, that FIFA ha have gone this route. What can likely come out of an appeal by SAFA against this decision? Well, I mean, I spoke to uh, the SAFA General Counsel, Norman Arons, uh, earlier today. And basically, I mean, they're looking at, at, at FIFA's regulations, and, and I think they're looking to try to overturn this decision, whether it be through FIFA or um, through the arbitrary court. Well, in your opinion, is it easy to prove that the referee actually acted on his own? Well, I think this is the thing that's got everybody in shock in South Africa is everybody's in complete dark about, uh, about uh, who manipulated the, the referee. Uh, FIFA has said in a letter that neither SAFA or the Senegalese FA, um, there's, there's no guilt in either of their direction. So with SAFA not being um, privy to what's in the, in the um, report on Lampy, uh, I think that is the problem is is that, was it just a terrible decision? How did he manipulate the game? These are questions that I think everybody in South Africa wants to know. But is it possible that anything would change FIFA's decision? Well, um, I think that is the thing, is, is that are they setting a precedent with this? Uh, FIFA regulations, their, their own regulations, say that the, the referee's decision is final. Obviously, with this match manipulation story, um, it, it, it's the first replay for that reason. There was a replay a few years ago where Uzbekistan and Bahrain were, were play, I had to replay a game. But in that case, it was because a referee had applied a law incorrectly. Uh, this, 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 I guess, depends on the evidence that FIFA has against referee Lampy. I mean, who, who is responsible for making him manipulate the game? Or was this a, a case of a referee go, doing stuff by, by his own uh, um, accord. Does this have any advantage for Senegal? Uh, uh, ap apologies, I could hear you. I was asking if this has, uh, if uh, Senegal will in any way benefit from this match replay. Well, uh, the, the difference is obviously after South Africa's two defeats to Cape Verde, uh, Form and momentum isn't with South Africa anymore. So if Senegal, I mean, they lost the previous game. So if they were to get a point, a draw at home, it, it would be an advantage to them because they're in a very good position to still qualify from the group. SABC football correspondent Rob Delport, thanks for talking to us on Network Africa. A visually impaired karate instructor who has been teaching young disabled athletes for nearly a decade says he believes he's no different from anybody else. Sabri Atia wants to succeed and challenge his entire world. 37-year-old Atia began practicing karate back in 2007 
and is the first visually impaired Egyptian to do so in several decades. Atiyah turned to karate and quickly began moving up the ranks, acquiring a black belt after undergoing intensive training with his instructor, Mohammed Mahmoud Al Akri. As someone who challenges his disability of being blind, I would like to say that I am not disabled. Everyone doubts me and even suspects that I can see, but I really am just like everyone else. There is no difference between me and other people. I've played a lot of games. I played dominoes with my friends. I did bodybuilding and I tried judo. I also played football with people who can see and with those who are not blind. He initially practiced bodybuilding in 1997 and did so for three years, but stopped because he did not enjoy the rigorous nutrition plans associated with the sport. His instructor says he helps him prepare for tournaments by simulating the noise generated by the audience, significantly challenging Atiyah to use his senses. As a result, by pure chance, during the 2014 World Championship in Germany, he ended up competing against two people who can see, who were not blind, and of course, this was the first championship, and he didn't rank. However, he had been competing against other blind participants, the same as him. He would have won a gold medal for Egypt. As Atiyah continues to encourage young disabled athletes, he is determined to take the sport to a greater height and represent his country in international tournaments. The Gaia's Electoral Commission is due to meet the governing Jubilee Party and the main opposition Nasser Alliance in a bit to solve the numbers over the makeup of the commission. Opposition presidential.